I wasn't really a fan of this episode. It was more like a, a big highlight reel, if you ask me. Oh, by the way, yo, his 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 face, man. He was looking pretty grotesque. By the way, it's late here, 11.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am T-Street Controversy with Fight View 360. Damn, my man was hurting. Uh, is it confirmed yet what round it was when his eye got broken? Looks like he's going to be out for probably about a year or so. But overall, if you were to ask me, man, this was more of a glorified like highlight. That's what this That's what this episode felt like. Uh, 18 minutes long. I'm watching um, through Verizon uh, for some time. For some reason, let me check real quick. Showtime anytime. Oh, it was down for a while. It was back up. Oh, my bad. Wrong screen. Jesus, that's not even calibrated. Hold on. Let's take a jump cut. Take a time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Let me fix that. All right, here. Let's see if it's on here. Um, are they going to make me sign in? It's always something going on. Hold on. Well, anyway, you should be able to watch it on uh, Showtime anytime. And if you have Showtime, um, you pay for it. Yeah, you can watch it. You pay for it. You'll be able to watch the episode here. And they have all of the episodes, too. Yeah, they have the epilogue. Boom. And they're going to ask me to sign in. Let's see if they ask me to sign in. Yeah, they're asking me to sign in. Hold on. Well, anyway. Um, yeah, we are what? About um, 10 days or so after the fight. Errol Spence stopped your Dennis Ugas. Round number 10. Broke his eye socket. Pretty much a dominating performance. However, early in the round, earlier in the fight, I remember Ugas was having some, some real good success going to the body. Jabbing to the body. But then he seemed to clam up. And, I re and, and going into the fight, I was saying like, yo, if Errol spins in, why do they keep showing this? Is it something in my settings? I'm not looking at that stuff. So you know how they say like the ads um, um, are from your search history? I'm not looking at fucking nail fungus. Why do I keep getting those ads on there? Anyway, uh, you keep messing up my train of thought. 28 and you know, old with 22 KOs. Errol Spence is the truth, you know, and especially with what he's, what he's going through and when he you know, has put his body through, you know, with the um, um, rumored alleged alcohol, you know, issues. I mean, after all, the guy did flip his Ferrari, Ferrari, get ejected due to drinking and driving and landed on his face. You know, thank God he's alive. And for him to be doing what he's doing today, being a three belt champion, that right there is simply amazing. For example, it was after um, the Sean Porter fight. He had gotten to the accident. How long ago was it after that? About a month or so. I don't remember. Um, then he came back for Danny Garcia in a very, very tough fight against a hard puncher. And it is well known that Errol Spence had lost some teeth. So to be able to come back and fight a puncher like Danny Garcia, you know, that meant something. And I said going into the fight before he fought your Dennis Ugas that if he was to beat Ugas, listen. That is a quality, quality win. In my opinion, if we were to rank overall wins, I'm talking like Sean Porter, number one, in my opinion. We're not talking about uh, uh, profit or marketability. Sean Porter, Ugas, number two, Kell Brook, number three. Danny Garcia, number four. Mikey Garcia, number five. Lamont Peterson, because he just didn't want to fight number six. Chris Algieri, number seven. It starts getting a little shaky between Sam Vargas, Phil Greco, and I'm ranking them in my top ten, just off the, off the top of my head. You know, I'm not saying that's, you know, maybe I can go back and change some things around. But, yo, Dennis Ugas is a high-quality win, three-belt champion right here, and I think it's no um, argument to say that him and Terrence Crawford it's going to be Spence versus Crawford. And obviously, Errol Spence should be the A side. But now, what's with these rumors that uh, Crawford is going to be fighting um, Keith Thurman in the summer? And then the winner of that gets Errol Spence in the fall, winter? 
Now, Crawford's last fight, 38-0 with 29 KOs, was against Sean Porter last November. Cal Brook, Kavalaskis, Amir Khan. See, here's the thing. Depending on how you look at it, you can really make comparisons on the resume. It's not just a blowout for Errol Spence regarding like the resume because let me tell you what fights I rate very highly. I'm not saying that they're, you know, like really super top tier, but yo, this Gamboa win, Ricky Burns, even Ray Beltran, he had a nice little run after that. These are some quality wins right here. Remember, Gamboa just got iced last week on the Spence versus Ugas undercard. Delore May has aged well. Quality name in Lundy. You know, the Postol win aged well. John Molina Jr. was just a fat man. The Felix Diaz fight, that was a very quality fight for him. This was an MSG. I was there. I never rated Julius and Dongo really high. The Jeff Horn win. Jose Benavidez Jr., that was a high quality. Okay, you can say he had one leg, but nonetheless, that was a high quality win right there to me. No high quality fight. You know, win, depending on how you rank it. Amir Khan, well, we know what happened with that. Kavalaskis, depending on how you, I don't really rate that too highly. Kel Brook, yeah, but at the same time, Kel Brook has a little bit of a resurgence. And then there's Sean Porter. He stopped Sean Porter. So now what you're seeing is a whole bunch of lying and bullshit going around on YouTube. People just making shit up. You know, Crawford and Spence agreed to this and... These two fighters sat there like none of that ain't nothing happened. We don't like it's all click big fake shit. Ain't none of this shit happened. You know, we don't know nothing about what's going on with Spence versus Crawford. You know, we do know that something's going on. But motherfuckers saying that they, you know, like, nah, all that, nah, nah, nah. Don't believe that shit. Don't believe that shit. Let's look at the 147 pound division though. Let's see what's going on here. I'm interested in what Virgil Ortiz is going to be doing, you know, because his promoter, well, one of his one of his promoters, uh, Bernard Hopkins over at Golden Boy, is like, yo, you need to move up. Like, they know something. Like, you know, why is he trying to hold on to this 147? And when are they going to order Boots Ennis versus uh, um, Ortiz? Or is Boots Ennis versus Clayton? It, that's, this can't be a final eliminator. This is supposed to be on the undercard of... Um, Jamel Charlo versus Bron on May 14th. This is supposed to be the chief support. Dennis versus Clayton. Don't be surprised if Boots uh, win by knockout. Kind of been, we don't know what he's doing. He's kind of on an island over there because PBC at 147 is running the show. Even with a Matastani Jonas. You know, I had a uh, media call with him. I was on a media call with him that the WBA had. And... I recorded it, but then I walked away and it was some shit on the screen. So it was kind of, I guess I could upload the audio. But yeah, basically, he's willing to step aside. Like he is right now the mandatory for Errol Spence, but he's willing to step aside um, for the Crawford fight to happen. And that's the real top tier at 147 right there. But if I was to really say, like right now, like this is a 50 50 fight to me, bro. 50 55. Also, you see your shit. I don't know, man. Motherfuckers just be on here just making up anything. I understand YouTube is your day job and shit. Y'all gotta be on your solid Jesse Raphael, fucking uh Phil Donahue, just you know, having a new storyline every day to keep shit going. You know, Geraldo the satanic panic. Right, you know, I get it. But it's like, damn, motherfuckers just be blatantly lying. I'm you know, and I'm subscribed to everybody, so when I see this shit pop up on my feed. I get fooled myself. I have to go check and say, wait a minute, what the fuck? Did he really say that? Then I'd be like, man, these motherfuckers make me sick. But yeah, bro, why he got why they got him listed as a Southpaw? I mean, I understand he fights a lot. So, I mean, I guess you can say he's a Southpaw. What if it's just deception? What if he's really a Southpaw that fights right-handed? You know, to try to trick us up. But yo, dude is good, bro. Dude is good. By the way, my man Ugas may be out for some time. By the way, what did you guys think of this episode of All Access? 
like I said, I, I wasn't impressed. Once I saw it was only 18 minutes, I just knew like, yo, it's going to be, some, it's not, it's 50 cent. I was like, it's not going to be. I'm tired of hearing about that motherfucking car accident. Yeah. I'm a great spirits. It was a good fight. Uh, very entertaining from, you know, the feedback I got from my family and friends. And I even fought better than not a mark was on expected. It. Shut all the doubters out. Yeah, he did. He shut me up. But at the same time, you know, like, what the, f you know, but what did he think? You know, we was going to be like, well, you know, like, of course we wanted to see. You know, he had a, and we didn't mention it yet, but he had a significant eye injury. It's like, bro, you got to show us something. And he did. He broke somebody else's eye. It's crazy. You know, like, that's two fighters now who faces he broke. You know, Kel broke. And now he broke his face. You know, broke the will of multiple fighters. Like, dude, dude, see, you know, I'm going to say it again. And I was being called a uh, Earl sexual. You know, I don't really understand what that means. But whatever. Um, I was saying, like, Earl Spence is considered, like, a special talent. Like, he's a good fighter. Great fighter. Not good. He's a great fighter. You know, so he's living up to the prophecy of what people were saying when he was an amateur. Like, yo, Earl Spence, he's going to come on the scene. And now, look, he's a three-belt champion. You know, and, and, and what he said that really, really impressed me, I was like, I'm sold, where he don't believe in tune-ups, you know, because it means you doubt yourself. Like, go straight for the gusto. And that's what somebody like him is supposed to be doing. You know, like, that's the respect right there. Now, I ain't like the shit about how, you know, he was acting like he was playing, even though I knew he was kind of playing with the 80-20 stuff, but he he tried to act like motherfuckers wasn't running around on the internet. But again, these internet YouTubers be liars anyway, so I don't even know why I'm, you know, addressing them. But anyway, um, I think it's safe to say that the winner of uh, Crawford versus Spence, depending if it's a two-fight deal or not, they're off the 154. I do not see them, whoever's the undisputed champion going to be, I do not see them I mean, staying around to defend the titles. They're going to move off to uh, 154 pounds. And one thing I'm very impressed with, let's go check his Instagram, is uh, seeing that Errol Spence, you know, is like, yo, like, get back in camp. You possibly got the biggest fight of your career coming up. You see what I'm saying? Don't go out here and start fucking sipping on grandpa's old cough medicine. You know, keep yourself, keep yourself busy. The dog is over there snoring, scared the shit out of me. By the way, I think these shirts were sold out. And I think he was charging like an arm and a leg for him. Let me see. I think he sold out the shark joints. But yeah, it's like, okay, there we go. Okay, $40. I think it was like $60 or some shit a couple of weeks ago. And it's like, bro, $130 for the hoodie? I don't know about that material, bro. I don't know about that material. I don't want to wash the $130 hoodie and that shit shrink. No way, a fade. Like, bro, you got to, I mean, you know, I don't know. This is some exclusive shit. You know, but I don't know. But yeah, man, um, T Street controversy with Fight Me 360. You know, I gotta be honest. Like, um, I really didn't like this all access episode. Ooh, those look nice. I really, I really didn't enjoy it. Like, cause it was like, you know, this this was the most compelling part of the uh, of the episode, the beginning. But then all the rest of it was just, you know, like. It was, it was a glorified, like, pretty much highlight. But you know what's going to be good, though? Spence versus Crawford for all access. And they got to do a sit-down with them two. We're going to need a sit-down. See, I want a fucking farm. Errol Spence is the man. I want a farm. Don't it seem like it's peaceful? I mean, yeah, you got to, like, you know, like, tend to all the, you know, the the farm and shit, but, you know, still, live off the land. Anyway, check the time out, like the video, subscribe, and teach through controversy with 5U360.